in him. But now I must discover that completeness that's already done because he finished it on the cross. He resurrected from the dead and he said, Kindred and carry kindred. It gives me great pleasure and honor to be elected. Come, the flame of God. He's preparing us to be the fire of God. Because Hebrews says... And my song is never sung And I get lost within the shadows From the setting of the sun have a discussion today. I feel so much different today. I actually feel full. I actually feel like uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm living in this place. This is a place called there. And the question is, where is this new place? You know, we so accustomed to living according to institution and systems that that's our normal reality. We really believe that we can't live apart from some kind of structure, some kind of institutionalized direction and systems. That's one of the reasons why people believe that AI is our future, but it really not our future. It's really an imagination of our bondage. So when we really begin to look at this thing, it says, someone asked me a question yesterday and said, uh, this that you're going to talk about your story and you're going to talk about the song, says, is this going to be just streaming or in person? Think about that. Is it going to be just streaming or in person? Well, the answer to that is it's going to be in-house. And it must be in your house. And as we flow, you're going to begin to understand that God has a relationship with you. And therefore, this new place is living by the reality of the principles of God and mammon, or God and money. Remember Jesus said in Luke 16 that you cannot serve God and mammon. Matter of fact, he admitted that both exist. But he also was saying there has to be a choice of the priority. So the priority, as we addressed before, in the principle six, it talks about that citizenship is a place that provides supportive environment in which all aspects of stewardship can flourish. So in this place, everybody can flourish. In this place, money and God can live in harmony. Because money is the principle that governs this world, but God is the principle that governs the real world. So we're living out of those principles, and the principles is how do you manage your life and your money? It's not just your money, because you understand that your life is the principle of the money that you have. So going back, principle one, that money management reflects your core value and thus serve as an accurate window to intimacy. In other words, it serves an accurate, accurate window of who is your number one priority. So if God is your number one priority, the first thing you do with money is see how you give to God. In other words, and you can't give to God unless you have a person that literally sows into you that you can sow into that person, not an institution. We've been told it's an institution, but an institution can't give you anything but a structure. So the intimacy that you experience with God is that that becomes your number one priority. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, seek the priority and the realm of the kingdom and let that be your number one priority. And, 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 and what you have to understand is God so loved that he gave and that was the beginning of the pattern. If you love God, you'll give. And if you love God, you'll give to where you've been enlightened by the things of God. Most people get knowledge from one place and give to another. That's insane. But the intimacy of the relationship with God and what is manifested in God is the truth of God. 
Principle two, your God-given personality tends to impact your approach to money and management and your approach to God. If your priority is money, you'll always spend your life running after money to leave it to somebody else. Because you're going to come to realize that the principle of God is that he will establish or give you the power to get wealth to establish his covenant because he's given you free life. Principle three, your confidence in God eliminates the need for hoarding and overspending. In other words, you are actually at peace, so you really don't need or don't want what God doesn't want you to have, so you're not just an impulse spender. You're not building up for one day because you understand God has you, and the only way you can be kept is kept by the power of God. So confidence in God eliminates the need of saying, I'm going to get it because it's the last one. It leads to a peaceful life in every place. Principle four, it says there's an accurate accountability of all access and liabilities, and this is the step to financial freedom. In other words, you understand what comes in, you regulate what's coming out, you average in your mind what you save. Here is the principle. Whatever you have, you use it for your life, you sow into the well, and you actually save for when you need to give in a hurry. So accurate accountability of assets is important. Understand what belongs to you and what belongs to God. And when you come to the realization that everything belongs to God and you are steward, therefore, you don't have to worry. You just be responsible and do whatever it is that you need to do. Principle five, if you establish a good work budget habit, it enables you to live according to God's priority. Now, what people really think, they think when you start talking about first fruit, tithes, offering, and alms, they think it's about money. But it's really, it's about an attitude of heart concerning those things. In other words, the first fruit is given to a person that's blessing your life with seed of the realm of God. Tithing is given unto God because it creates your protection. Offering is that which you sow so that you can get the increase, and the more you sow, the more you grow. Alms is given to the poor, and you lend to the Lord. All of these are principles of heart. And as you establish those within your budget, your God priority will be that you will never lack. You'll always be willing to serve. You'll always be looking where you can give. And you figure your life is a drink offering for others. So this is a place called there. Where? When you come to the place that you are there, you will begin to realize that you are there when his story becomes your story and your story becomes his story and there is only one story. So you're no longer double-minded and stable in all your ways. Now you understand that you have been united with him, and this is what God desires for the nation, and it's called a united nation. Now, a united nation is a united nation of people by the Spirit of God, globally, worldwide. There's only two worlds, this world and that world. So we are joined into that world to function 
in this world so that we can come into the reality that this is a new and living way. This is the way of gathering unto one. Now, the answer to the question of whether it's going to be live streaming or in person, we're waiting on God to say when we will gather as one as the gathering. And right now, in my mind and in my understanding and in my spirit, it may be in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we'll still broadcast from the Lighthouse Studio here in Jacksonville. Remember, we are brethren. Remember, we are one. Remember, this place called there is the place that we understand that God is all and in all. How does God do what he does? First of all, he gives a vision, and I'm sure to let you know, the vision has been given, so why do we choose? God didn't give us institutions. God didn't give us systems. God gave us a relationship with him and a vision to bring it to pass. God didn't give us a structure and a scientific medical community to deal with mental health. He says, I want your mind to be my mind, and you won't have no problem with my mind. Get rid of your mind. He's also saying, I didn't want you to wrestle with your soulless activity. I wanted your soul to be saved and come to the end of itself so you understand that in you, is the seed of the incorruptible seed that will bring you into a place called there. And in that place, it'll bring you into an application of a relationship with the living God that you can learn to live out of his mind, out of his thought. And you begin to realize that I'm telling you a story that I have lived based on the vision that God gave and he gave it to America, but in order to give it to America, it had to be for every person in America, every person in the world, so it has to become first personal, and then it becomes united as a nation for all people. See, the church wasn't just for activity. The church was a people that really was one with God. So when we're talking about telling my story beyond 66, remember, 666, add another six and you'll get humanity. Add another six, you'll get the Antichrist. 666, you'll come to find out everybody that's not in Christ is Antichrist. It ain't hard. So when you realize that Martin Luther King had come to the place that he saw a wall and he says, I've been to the mountaintop. I've looked over. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. He was actually seeing beyond humanity. And then he turned around and says, I'm not fearing any man because. I have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. He had seen the glory of the Lord. And what he saw was a clear picture of our future. And he come and said, the only way that you're going to get there is go beyond the fear of death. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and of a sound mind. So when you come, to the place that you just love, there is no fear. When you come to the place that you have no mind in the matter, there is no fear. So we come to the realization that only thing we want to do is live a normal life. So that's why we're talking about my story, her song, but it's both of our lives. So we come into what we call JFI, United Nations. What is that? It's a new picture of America. Let's go in. Why? It's because it's the original intent and the original vision of God for America. 
And the declaration is Son of Republic. Look and learn. So I'm telling every America, when you look at the vision, then learn because you must be in order to see before you can partake. This is a gathering of one. This is a place of agreement. And the place of agreement is a place of power. And God has released his blessing. He has commanded the blessing in the place of unity. So we see and we understand that as we flow into this new place, as we flow into this new understanding, we understand that we are the Israel of God. The church is the Israel of God. Watch the scriptures. Galatians 3 and 29. Galatians 6 and 16. Go read it from different translation and be at peace. That's who you are. We are part of his commonwealth and have had and have the wealth in common. In other words, it's a great exchange. You give him you, he gives you all of him, and we learn to live in a supernatural world in this natural world. But here's the difference. God's wealth is wealth that is to be given away. In other words, the more you give, the more you receive. So it's reciprocal. If you are a giver and a hilarious giver, God will keep giving you more so you have more to give. He blesses us that we might be a blessing to others and that we will become a giver, a hilarious giver. He'll bring us into a place that we understand the power of generalist, of generosity. And his people are all givers. This given must be. B, in four realms of understanding. And they all live in reality, not just principles, not one or the other, but be prepared all the time to do what is necessary. One, this giving must be systematic. In other words, you give, first of all, you give first fruit, tithes, offering, and arm and be systematic. And as you flow, you begin to realize it could be sacrificial in the beginning, but it becomes a living reality when it's become a way of life. And the way of life is be ready to give more than usual at times. In other words, don't count nickels and noses. Just be grateful that you have it and, and be able to do and give spontaneously. Always be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do what God says and he'll take care of the rest. Be spontaneous. Because here's what the scripture says. And people seem to miss this. That those that are born of the Spirit is like the wind. Now, people laugh about that, but if you are living in an institution, you're disobeying God because you can't move when God speaks. You can't go do what God called you to do because you're in bondage to an institution, you're in bondage to a structure, and you're not free in God, and he says you should be like the wind. They don't know where you're going. They don't know where you're coming, but you can see it moving so you know it's by the wind. You might not can see the wind, but you can see the trees and the leaves moving so you know that there is life. So you can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can see it in a vessel. So when we're given spiritually, it says let your principles and your motivation B, that which is Bible-based, and basically you come into the realization that you give because you love, and you love to give. Let me say it again. You give because you love, and you love to give. And you give wherever God say give, and you'll be satisfied, you'll be honored. Why? Because giving is an honor. It's not just a law. It's an honor. 
It's an honor to sow into honorable places and honorable people. It's not, <laughs> well, let me go on. Proverbs 3 and 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. That means stuff. Honor the Lord, not with lip service. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Giving God first is always honorable and giving to him or her that God has sent is always honorable. It says, so thy barns shall be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So what you realize is that giving is an honor, and the more you give, the more that shall be given unto you. But make sure that you are giving and sowing in good ground. Luke 6, 38. It says, give, first principle, and it shall be given unto you, return, good measure, press down, and shaken together, and running over, watch this, shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet with all shall be measured to you again. So what you have to understand that as you give, the more you give, the more it is in return. And men shall give unto your bosom. It won't fall out of the sky. God has to move on somebody's heart and say, give. And when God say to you in your heart, give, don't question, just give. Because you don't know what's on the backside of that giving. God does. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7, it said, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall weep also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. In other words, it says, that which you give, give willingly, not grudgingly, not like it hurt, but what you realize that you need to give every man according to how God has purpose, or you have purpose in your heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You give because God loves for you to give. You give because it's the way in the heart of God. Because now, your story has become his story. And now you have become a giver. But this is the gate of the preparation of pressing into this new priesthood. This is a priesthood that has been caught up into the place that they can see. Because this new priesthood has caught the vision of the mercy seat. They have come to a place that these freely give themselves and their treasure to the Lord, not to mention plenty of justice, plenty of mercy, and faith in his name. So we not just give money, we are merciful, we are justified, we are peaceful, we walk by faith and not by sight. His gifts are out of the soul. Gifts of the soul ought to be given as well as tithes and material things. The gift out of the soul as the tithe and the material things with which we are blessed. So we talk mostly about the things of the natural realm, the body, and the soul. But let's talk about tithing in the realm of the spirit. Let's talk about tithing in the third dimension. Let's talk about tithing or giving in the dimension of the third of God. In the place, in the realm of spirit that interfaces in or in the most holy place. 
Now we're talking about the Feast of Tabernacle. We're talking about the peace where the rain is flowing. And he says, in the time of rain, ask for rain in the time of the latter rain. And the Melchizedek priesthood is a place where you remember. You remember the way that God brought you. You remember how God blessed you when you couldn't do anything. You remember that the third dimension has to do with nature and being. It's one with God. I am his nature. I am his character. Now he become me and I become him as he is. So are we in this world, we now move from religion to reality. We now move from the shadows of the old into the essence of the new. The righteousness remnant becomes the tide. So it's all about a people. It becomes a tide company, a people who become what they give and we declare, I am there. Why? How do you know I see the vision? When I see the vision, I know when I arrive. If you don't know the vision, you can't tell where you are. So the vision has been given. So why do we choose? In other words, we've done everything that we could do. We come back and we want to live a normal life. Then someone tells me I got to do something else. But I come to the realization that I am there. I am one with him. I am there in my understanding. I am there in my spirit. I am there because he brought me there. I am there. There is a secret place of the most high. It's a reality. There is a mysterious place. It is one that few men or women have ever known. Many are called but few are chosen. For in it is found the secrets of life and godliness. So when we start talking about life and godliness, we're talking about life internally, life externally, and life that really gives godliness to the environment they're in. There is a place of communion. So when you take the natural communion, he says, you do that and remember my death till I come. In the Holy Ghost, he came, and now he's in his body. And there, I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee. That's one with him, one with the body, and in that place, we become the body of Christ. There he provides, even if he has, to send raven. This is a place that he has become my Jehovah Jireh. He has become my provider. He has become the one that I've been waiting for. But wait a minute. What will happen to me if I surrender all? People sing that song, I surrender all. Well, if you surrender all, then he has to give all. I surrender all. What happens to me if I surrender all? Where do I go? Jesus tells us in John 12 that the hour is come for a dying creation to hear his voice and see his hand. You must see his hand, but you must go beyond the hand because the hand is in the body, but the voice is in the head. When you begin to see this, it means laying down our way of life and laying hold of his life. John 12 and 26 says, if any man serve me, let him follow me and where I am there shall my servant be also. The place called there is a place of service. So God is bringing us into a service, and Martin Luther King said it this way, everybody can be great in this place because everybody can serve. What is 
this place. There is a walk with God and a walk in God and a highway is there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness, Isaiah 35 and 9. It says, it is a way of destiny. It is a way that we begin to realize that two have become one. It is a mysterious place and the path in which no foul beast or vultures I have seen. The devil, which is a vulture, can't see this place. All the foul spirit cannot penetrate this place. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. For there you are dead, and your life is hid in Christ, Colossians 3.3, 3, because where is this place? It's a place called there, and I'm there. So I'm telling my story, she's going to sing her song because we just want to live a normal life. Where is the place called there? There is the place of life. There is a river, a stream whereof make glad the city of God. Where? Is the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. My God, Psalm 46 and 4, you begin to realize that in the top verse of 5, it talks about thou wilt show us. Psalms, my God, Psalms 16 and 11, it says, thou wilt show me. In this place, God's going to lead. In this place, God's going to show you. I will show, thou will show me the path of life. So life is a path. Life is a lifestyle. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16, 11. There is where he is. And since he is in me, there is in me. Hallelujah. You are already hidden in this abiding place. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Galatians 3.3. 3. Life is there. Not yours, but his. Jesus said in John 14, not to worry about this place called there. It is his preparation. It is his place. It is his promise. To us, where am I? Where am I in this place? I am in him. He is in me. There you may be also where I am. And whether I go, you know. And the way, you know. If a man love me, he will keep my word and my father will love him, and we will come into him and make our bowl and our dwelling place in him. We are the habitation of God. We are where God dwells. We are this new place in John 14, 3, B, 23, the whole chapter. There is a place. Let me back up. Now, there is a place of union. And the place of union is a place of oneness with the Father. I am there. There is where you worship. Because this is a season of worship. This is a season of intimacy. This is the season of the rest of God this is a season that we see the vision. Not only the vision of the Lord rest, we see the vision of America. We have been united as America. We have been united as a nation because that's the vision God gave and nothing can abort it. The vision has been given. 
Why should we choose? Why should we vote? Why should we listen to the medical community? Why should we listen to the scientific community? We need to now listen to God because he gave the vision, he gives the understanding, and he, God, will bring us beyond sick, sick, sick. This if I don't make it to right. tomorrow And my song is never sung And I get lost within the shadows From the setting of the sun If there is hope 